Hey there nation, welcome to the show where we help you to play miniatures wargaming on a budget. It is I, Commander Chiefski, and we are back with another episode of Cheap Shots. And this is episode number 38, and on this episode we're going to show you how to quickly as well as cheaply paint up 20 direwolves for your vampire counts army for Warhammer Fantasy Battle or for Warhammer Age of Sigmar. So as you can see here, this is what the end result will look like for our dire wolves. We have 10 dire wolves, which are painted up in that ethereal kind of bluish color, while we have another 10 dire wolves in a flaming green color as well. And we're going to show you how to quickly as well as cheaply paint up these ethereal looking dire wolves, while at the same time only costing you $13.88, and at the same time saving you over $130 in savings by doing this the cheapskate method. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get this video started, and this time around I'm going to do a little bit differently. I'm actually going to show you how I actually put these miniatures together all the way from assembly to base work to the painting process and eventually talk about exactly the cost saving tips that we use for this entire process. So with that being said, let's get this video on a roll. All right, so the very first thing you want to do, of course, is to assemble your miniatures. So as you can see here, I basically spent the entire time just putting these miniatures together, uh, cutting them out of the sprues, gluing them together. This unit is actually made of uh, 15 dire wolves. Uh, 15 wolves are actually from the Fenrisian Wolves line of Warhammer 40,000 is what I decided to use. And the reason why is because when you look at the dire wolf kit that came with the Games Workshop, they look more like zombies and stuff like that. And I didn't really want that look for my miniatures. I actually want to make it look like they were like spectral hellhounds, like they were ghost hounds hunting you down. So I went with those from Rizian Wolves anyways. And plus they were a lot cheaper. You know, they're a lot cheaper at my local gaming store uh, to buy some boxes of that. At the same time, I also managed to buy some wargs from... Uh, Lord of the Rings, the uh, the tabletop miniatures game by Meg's Workshop, I was able to get a couple of those secondhand for a couple of bucks off another guy at the store as well. So those are the miniatures I used to put these guys together. And of course, I glued them on 25 millimeter by 50 millimeter bases. So that way they're just the old standard cavalry bases so that way they can be used in games of Warhammer uh, Fantasy Battle. So that's the first thing you do, of course, is just assemble your miniatures using super glue and as well as bases. So now that we're done assembling the miniatures, the next thing you need to do, of course, is to base the miniatures with basing materials. I like to use the textures, it's very simple. I like to use wood glue as well as uh, dirt is what I need to do. Uh, just sand from my local outside garden, uh, basically is what I do. I have a sandbox in my backyard, that's where I get all my sand that I use for my miniatures. That's why it's very organic looking because it's quite literally from my garden. And at the same time, it saves me a ton of money at the same time. Also, I use the cheapest wood glue that you could find. I use a bottle of Elmer's wood glue in order to do all this. Oh, sorry, no Elmer's wood glue. I used uh, Gorilla Glue for this. And the reason why I use Gorilla uh, uh, brand wood glue is because uh, my sister was actually having a garage sale and she was moving. So she needed to get rid of all of her chemicals. And so I got a big, huge bottle of wood glue for free. So this basically cost me nothing, just time and effort is all it did. So all I need to do for this, of course, is just to put the wood glue on the bases that you want to be textured. Then you just dust it with some sand and just let it sit off and let it dry by itself. And uh, once you basically got your bases textured, the next thing you do now, of course, is to uh, seal the sand on your miniature bases. So here's a photo of the sealant. You let the seal dry as well as cure. Basically what I do is I take a equal mixture of water as well as wood glue and kind of make it into like a runny uh, wood glue paste is basically what I do. And then what I do, I just wash it kind of like a wash all over the top of the texturing on the bases. So that way you can see all the crevices as well. When it dries, what I'll do is it acts as a sealant to keep all the sand onto your bases. So that way they don't come flicking off and uh, causing all kinds of problems. And at the same time, also kind of cures it as well. So that way it's nice and smooth on top. So that way it makes it very easy to paint. It's a very, very cost effective method to do this and like I said the wood glue doesn't cost me anything because I got that for free and the same thing with the water that's from my tap so it makes it really really simple and also really cheap to do at the same time so uh, once you're done with the sealant the next thing you do now is to move on to magnetizing your miniatures so the next step, of course, is that I magnetize my miniatures. What I do is I actually have a whole stack of sheet magnets that I use uh, that I got from advertisements from my local uh, high school. This high school was just handing those out at a local football game in order to promote the high school and stuff like that. So what I did is I just grabbed a stack of them because they're absolutely free. And what I did is I just, of course, measured out the dimensions I needed to, cut it to the width and length I needed for each of my miniatures, and then I just super glued it to the bottom of each of the bases is all I did. Now you could, of course, buy pre-made sheet magnets that are cut to the size of the bases of your miniatures, but those are expensive. Especially when you do a lot of miniatures as well. Uh, we're talking about like five ba five bucks uh, for a pack of five, so almost a dollar per magnet. Whereas this is just cheap and it's free, and so that's all I need to do for that. And so all I need to do, of course, is just super glue the bases directly to the sheet magnets, so that way it moves down. The nice thing about sheet magnets as well is that because they are polarized, you could actually put them on another set of sheet magnets and they magnetize to the base. It makes it very cost-effective and very easy way to magnetize your miniatures very quickly instead of spending hundreds of dollars on rare earth magnets and things like that in order to. Uh, miniatures. 
And lastly, the very last uh, step for our prep work is to trim the sheet magnets. All I do is just take a uh, pair of scissors, trim it along the edges of the bases, and then bam, as you can see, our miniatures are now fully prepped. They're fully based. They're on their bases like they're supposed to be. The base material has uh, texturing on it, and also the bases are magnetized. So now that we're done with all the prep work, next thing we need to do now, of course, is start priming and painting these miniatures up. So step number one, the first thing you do of course is prime your miniatures and this one is a very important step because this priming that we're going to do for the miniatures is pretty much where most of the painting is going to go into actually painting these miniatures up to make that glowing ethereal look. So because I like to use rust flat white primer, I got a can of it for $3.99 at my local Walmart and all you need to do of course is just do it once over real quick over the entirety of the miniature as best as you can. You're going to try to cover up as much of the miniature as you can in this flat white primer because that is the only real painting we're really going to do for these miniatures because everything for the glowing ethereal effect that I found just works best off of a plain white coat. So that's exactly what you need to do on this part as well. Now obviously the primer will not get every single square inch of the miniature. You will need to do some touch up painting but since it's white it's a very simple color and the next step of course is to touch up. So the next step, of course, is to do touch up painting with some white acrylic paint by Apple Barrel. It's a really cheap stuff, 50 cents at your local Walmart. I have a bigger bottle here that cost me $3.99 just because I, I use a lot of white paint and the things that I do. So I just bought a huge tub of it. But as you can see, there's eight fluid ounces for like less than four bucks. And what you need to do, of course, is just touch up your paint real quick. So what you need to do is like, Concentrate areas of the primer miss. Things like the underbelly of the miniatures, usually where the primer does miss. So you just flip these guys over paint the underbelly as well as the recess in the miniature which is a single layer of white you don't really need to do a really good job on it so much to say just enough to cover it over it's okay if some of the gray shows through um, a little bit through the undercoat that's perfectly fine because you're not really going to be concentrating too much on getting a good finish with the white paint on it the white is just there to interact with the glazing that you're going to use in order to make this ethereal look and we're going to talk about exactly how you do glazing here in a second so once you get the done with the touch up paint with the white paint the next thing you do now is start glazing your miniatures all right, so this is the next step. The next step, of course, is to wash all your miniatures now with homemade glaze. Now, a lot of people wonder, what is glazing? What do you mean by that? Basically, all you're doing is you're taking acrylic paint and you're watering it down with water. That's all glazing is. That's all it really is. Um, a lot of people think that glazing is some kind of special uh, mixture of acrylics and something else or some kind of special wash or some kind of special thing in order to glaze your miniatures. It's really not. It's actually really, really simple. All you do is you just take your whatever color that you want for your base coat. You just take a little bit of paint and then add equal amounts of water and water to it until it's about the consistency of milk is what it is. Now, it's going to give it very, it's going to dilute the color a lot. It is. It's going to make it very translucent, but that's the point. That's what it means by glazing. Glazing is basically just watered down paint that you spend time layering layers of glaze wash all over your miniatures to get the desired effect. So as you can see here, I used Holly Branch for all the uh, dire walls I want to be green. I used a, a Skyline by Folk Art for all the miniatures I wanted to be blue. Now, if you'll notice, after applying several layers of the watered down paint, you can still see a lot of the white undercoat showing through, which is perfectly fine because what that is, is that kind of gives it its inner light for the glowing effect to make it look ethereal is what it does. What you're doing is you're basically concentrating these darker colors primarily into the recesses of the miniature for the most part is what you're gonna do, okay? Because what we're gonna do is a two glaze process. The first step is to do a darker color. So holly green is a darker green color. It gives that nice base coat to work off of. Same thing with the uh, sky blue from uh, Skyline from Folk Art. It gives a really nice base coat to work off of. At the same time, the darker colors go into the recesses of the miniature. At the same time, some of the white is still in the highlighting, which is really nice on that part. So all you need to do is put about three layers of glazing all over the miniature. It took me about three coats is all it did. This process isn't really difficult. It's just you got to apply a wash, let it dry, apply a wash, let it dry, apply a wash, and let it dry again. That's the only process about it. But because you have so many of these guys you have to work on, it's pretty simple. You just work on the entirety of 10 miniatures with the green. Then you work on the other 10 miniatures with the blue. Then you go back to the green, back to the blue back to the green again and then back to the blue it's about three coats ought to do it now if you want to give a darker result you could of course add more coats as you want to but for me three was perfectly enough for what i needed for and as you can see it looks pretty good so far so now that we have the base coat down with the glazing the next thing to do of course is a dry brush all right, so the next thing, of course, I did is a dry brush real quick. So like I said before, some of the white was showing through with the glazing that we did earlier, but I just want to make that even, even more accentuated because what I'm going to do is I'm going to dry brush these and I'm going to glaze them again with a lighter shade of the colors I used to uh, to do the base coating on this one. So what I did is, of course, I used Granite Gray by Apple Barrel. Cost you about 50 cents at your local Walmart. I just did a really, really light dry brushing with it on the most part, mainly on the focusing on the elevated areas. So you can see all the fur, the tufts of fur that all over the miniatures, the sharper edges of the miniatures as 
well. It is to cut that uh, with the dry brushing. And at the same time, you can still see that darker, lighter uh, undercoat still right beneath it. And the reason why we're trying to do this is because you want to accentuate the, the highlights of this miniature as well as the uh, raised surfaces of it because we're also going to wash these miniatures again in another series of glazes in order to get our final ethereal look. So that's all you need to do, just do a quick dry brush with the granite gray and then you're moving on to the final glazing process. And here's what the miniatures look like with the final glazing process completely finished. What you need to do, of course, is use, once again, homemade glaze. In this case, I use Bright Blue by Apple Barrel Paint for the blue glowing uh, of Dire Wolves. And I use Crisp Apple by Apple Barrel Paint for the green ones. And all I did, of course, is just mix up these paints, the blue with water, until it became the consistency of milk. Same thing with the uh, Crisp Apple. Added water until it was about liquidly as about uh, consistency of milk as well. And I just added it all over the entirety of the miniature. I did about two coats of the blue onto the left hand side and about three coats with the green on the right hand side as well. So as you can see here what it does is it actually interacts really nicely with the darker undercoat that you did before and brings out a lot of the color on that. At the same time it also interacts with the gray dry brushing that we did and at the same time make it look like it has this kind of glowing effect as well which is really really important on that and that's where you get that finish from, from it as well. So once you of course let that all dry the last thing to do of course is spray varnish on your miniature. I like to use matte varnish on mine because I like to see the Christmas of the detail. I don't like the sheen, so I just did it once over with that matte varnish real quick. And then, whether you're aware of it or not, you are pretty much done with the miniatures. All the painting for these guys are done. Next thing we need to work on now is the bases. All right, so the next thing we need to work now, of course, is the bases. So you can see here's a side look at the miniatures. You can see they got this nice kind of glowing effect going on. For that, what I did is I just put two thin coats of Anita's acrylic paint all over the entirety of the bases. You just put two thin coats on it. Now, some of the primer, white primer, might show through it. That's perfectly fine. You don't need to do a perfect job on this, just enough to cover up most of the minute of the bases anyways. And the reason why is because you'll be dry brushing with granite gray here in a little bit anyways, which is a really pale gray color. So if any white's showing through, it's just going to look like it's part of the dry brushing. So you really don't need to worry about that. Too far. So like I said before, this is a very cheap and very quick method of painting, and they get a really good tabletop standard, so that's all you really need to do. Just do two thin coats of gray acrylic and ready to move on. So now that we have the base coat, the base is done. Next thing we need to do, of course, is dry brush the bases. In this case, like I said before, we're using Granite Gray by Apple Barrel Paint. And once again, you're doing a real quick once over of the dry brushing, just capturing all the raised surfaces and the texture in the bases. That way it looks like they're running across slate and granite and like really gray dirt. It looks really, really awesome at the same time. It also goes very nicely matching with the highlighting that we did on the wolves. So as you can see there, it looks really, really awesome as well. And you got this kind of cool, you know, glowing effect going on with the wolves as well as interacting with the granite, which is pretty nice as well. So after we get done with that, the next part we need to do, of course, is start working on the individual details of the, uh, of the bases. So the next thing I do with these guys to work on the individual bases, I use flocking on this. Now usually I don't use flocking too much on my bases, I just mainly use sand on this. But for my Vampire Counts army, I wanted to make it look interesting by interacting some, you know, grassy, stony look to the bases, just to make them look a little bit different. So because of that what I used was homemade flock. Um, we talked about this earlier when we had Iron Major on the channel before talking about homemade flock. What we do is we just take some uh, sawdust, we put it through like a cheap blender and food processor that we bought specifically for this process, minced it up to make it really fine and green. Uh, grainy that of course just add really cheap acrylic paint to it in this case we use I think it was like a olive drab colors what we used for this flocking and just mix it together let it dry and it comes out this beautifully granulated uh, flocking which is made from homemade stuff which is pretty awesome all I did is I just took some wood glue just dabbed onto the uh, bases that I wanted to have grass on and I just take the homemade flocking and dust it real quick and then let it dry and move on so you can see that it looks like this really cool kind of rustic highland type of look going on on the bases I'm really liking the way that these are coming out so far. And the very last step, of course, is to base coat the rim of the bases. In this case, I used English Ivy Green is what I used for the bases because that was the same color I used for my Vampire Counts army. So I just did two thin coats along the rims of the bases, and that kind of ties all together. The Ivy, the uh, Ivy, the English Ivy Green is a nice neutral color. It's really, really dark green. At the same time, it looks really contrasts really nice with the gray of the bases as well as the homemade flocking. At the same time, you can see that it interacts really nicely with the miniature that we just got done painting as well. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That is the end result of what your miniatures will look like. It's the very first picture we showed you at the beginning of the presentation. It runs at $13.88, assuming you, of course, don't have these materials on hand already in order to paint these materials and make it very, very quickly. Uh, this took me about, I think, about maybe four hours of painting. 
is what it basically took me four hours to do all this. Most of the time, which is spent on just waiting for the glazing to dry, is primarily what most of it was waiting on. Actually, to be honest, I did more work on the bases than I actually did on the miniatures. Uh, it's just because the glazing is simply just wash it, let it dry, wash again, let it dry, wash again, let it dry. Then you dry brush it, then you wash it again with a lighter tone. So it makes it really simple to paint these things up. It's just that uh, it just takes some time to dry is all it takes. And uh, but since we didn't use any oil washes on it, we don't have to worry about that because you want to maintain that bright glowing effect. So it's a really, really simple paint job in order to do this. So now that we're done talking about how to paint these up cheaply as well as quickly, let's go and talk about the materials and the prices you would have to pay in order to paint these up using name brand paints like Citadel as well as Army Painter in order to get the same effect. And we're going to talk about how much money you save doing the cheapskate method. All right, so let's go and talk about the Citadel and Army Painter method. So these are the materials that you would need to buy in order to paint the same way. For the wood glue, you will need to buy Citadel's PVA glue. Runs at twelve dollars fifty cents for that stuff. Uh, for me, it was free because I just got that from a garage sale, but it costs twelve fifty in order to do that. At the same time, if you want to add that sandy base like I did for mine, you need to buy a tub of Astro Granite by Games Workshop, which is a textured gray paint. Runs at seven dollars eighty cents as well. At the same time, you also need to buy a pack of uh, Litco Games magnetic base bottoms for a uh, cost of five uh, four fifty. In order to magnetize the bottoms of your miniatures as well. Now that we get done with the prep work, the next thing you do, of course, is spray paint the entire miniature with Corax White Spray. It's going to run you $17 in order to do that. You'll then need to paint and touch up the paint the miniatures with uh, White Scar, which runs you $4.55 for that. Now, the technique I saw about how to paint these up using the Citadel method, you'll need to buy Hex Wraith Flame and Night Haunt Gloom, which are kind of like these, you know, technical paints, I guess, that Games Workshop makes. They cost you $7.80 for those. You just need to paint the green ones in the uh, Hexworth Flame and then the Diet Comp Gloom for the blue ones. So you need to buy both of those kit pots. They're only $7.08 for that. You'll then need to dry brush your miniatures with Ultawan Gray, which runs you $4.55 for that. And then what you need to do, of course, is use glaze in order to, you know, do the last bit of miniature work. You'll need to buy Waywatcher Green and Gulliman Blue, which are two glazes ran by Games Workshop. We watch your green costs uh, fourteen dollars and ninety two cents, and Gloom and Blue costs fourteen dollars and ninety two cents as well. And that's what you use for the very last step for the glazing process of your miniatures. Now, once you're done with that, of course, you need to buy a can of Minatorium varnish in order to spray the miniature down with a flatten it down. And then for the bases, you'll need to base the miniature in Slanesh Gray, which will be four dollars fifty five cents. But then, of course, you then dry brush once again with Ultra One Gray to get that finish. And then, of course, in order to do the flocking, you'll need to buy a kit of flocking. The cheapest one I could find was Army Painter's basing set, which runs. $18.99 for the flocking, and then you'll need to edge the miniature bases with Vulcan Green, which runs you $4.55 for that. In the end, if you were to buy everything on the shopping list in order to paint up these miniatures the same way I did using the Citadel and Army Painter stuff, it'll grant you a cost grand total of $142.93 in order to paint this way. Now, when you take the $142.93 that Citadel and Army Painter would charge you, and you subtract it from the cheap scheme method I used, which was $13.88, we're talking about a grand total savings of $103.05 being saved. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That is the way that we qu quickly and cheaply painted up our dire wolves for our Vampire Counts Army, uh, costing only $13.88 and also saving you $130 in the process of doing so. So that's a good deal for this one, you guys. As always, please feel free to like, comment, and or subscribe. You guys, input is invaluable to us as always. Also, check us out on Facebook, Instagram, as well as blogger.com for all the latest, greatest hobby news related to this channel. That's a good deal for this one, you guys. We'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out and stay classy.